And back here in Nigeria, let's send attention to the presidential villa, Abuja, where the Federal Executive Council has approved the setting up of a disasters relief fund. The fund will make provision for quick response to victims of disasters across the country. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, explained that a fund will source finances from the three tiers of government and the private sector for flood victims. This development comes as the Federal Executive Council also constituted a technical committee to reassess the dams across the country. The Federal Executive Council have constituted a committee to look into not only the allowed dam, but other dams in the country, to reassess them and come up with recommendations that will solve the challenge of flooding and also put it into use the available dams we have. Mr. President's views that we need in this era of climate change, of climate uh, uh, events, as well as the fact that, that from time to time there will be, no matter the prevention measures, there will be um, disasters that will occur, that we need to build greater resilience in the form of a substantial disaster relief fund, separate from the agencies that actually intervene physically. This will focus on the financing. And joining me for more discussion on this is a climate environment campaigner for environmental rights action, Babawali Obayonju. Good to have you join us. Thank you very much for inviting me. So, following the f devastating flood in Borono State, we see that the federal government has now made two critical decisions. One of them is to evaluate dams uh, across the country, and the other one is to create um, a disaster relief fund. And what do you make of this in terms of how it would address the issue of flooding? Well, first, um, I would say it's messy after death, uh, because this is not the first time we are having issues with our dam. And I know definitely in the plan of every dam, in the plan of every construction, there's always an allocation or an allotment for maintenance, which we have seen over the time that our government has not paid serious attention to. But now that they are deciding to do that, I would, I would support it and I would praise that effort. But I would want it to go beyond lip service. And setting up a disaster relief fund also is also like mercy after death, because this is not the first time. We've had several devastating Floods from 2012, 2010, different parts from that time onwards is been getting worse with the But setting up this one in itself is a step in the right direction. Um, yes, creating the fund is one thing. Funding it is another thing. And we are hoping and believing and praying and hoping and trusting that there will be funds allocated to that portfolio urgently um, to meet the people's needs, to help them to settle especially those people who have become refugees in their own country. Mm -hmm. um, so this fund, I believe, would help the people um, resettle quickly and get back to their life as soon as the floods end out. Um, and for the issue of checking up on our dams, it should not just be one that happens when it comes to rainy season. It should be a routine checking of our dams across the country, around the country, where we have dams, and our bridges also. It should go beyond just the dams. Mm. It should also extend to our bridges. It should also extend to our roads. And, and, and Mr. Bayon, you, you, you mentioned, yeah. you know, not just focusing on our dams, uh, because right now there are other dams outside of Nigeria that are also chart, you know, problematic for us. For example, the Lagro Dam in Cameroon that is, you know, um, a lot of state yeah. governors are already raising alarm about. Um, Cameroon has said they're going to open that dam. It's going to be problematic for Nigeria. What should we be doing, you know, also to address those kind yeah. of challenges of, you know, neighboring dams or dams that for, 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 from countries that bother Nigeria? Yeah, so the issue of the dams overflowing their, their banks or the, the walls that protect the water is, is something that is going to be on the increase because the world is still playing Ludo or playing Sue or playing Ayu with the issue of climate change. Science have said, the research have revealed that if we are to have a reduction in these disasters that are coming to the world in different forms and shapes, especially those of us in the global south, we have to take drastic effort to stop the expansion of fossil fuel industry. 
That is one step in the right direction that the world must take, that Nigeria, that Africa must begin to clamor for. Now, to stop the expansion of fossil fuel industry. Because if we stop that, then we have been able to reduce at least the emission at source. And that's where we have been able to solve part of the climate crisis, which is the flooding, increase the rainfall, and the like. So the first step is to take that step, put an end to the expansion of fossil fuel industry. There should be a drastic step in that direction. Then secondly, because we know this water, the rain is going to increase if we do not take action. There's need for government on both sides. Because that's why we have ECOWAS, for example. Cameroon, Nigeria, they are part of that, that body. There should be a regulatory framework that dams across the, the economic country of West African nation, whatever state, should make a law, a policy that dams around this West African region and around Africa should be reinforced and strengthened. And where you have excess flow, there should be planned because the rain, we know, for example, the rain is going to increase in July. The rain is going to increase in August. Why not start releasing this water gradually in January? Why wait till when is July? Mm. When you have the overflow. So these are things, and this is not rocket science. The scientists who work in those dams know these things. There should be gradual release of the water so it doesn't become a problem. So that policy should be enforced around Africa, around West Africa, and in Nigeria and the bordering, bordering, um, bordering nations around us. So that is one step that should be taken in addition to cutting the mission all right. I guess he also speaks to how um, governments across Africa, you know, are handling the issue of adaptation as well. Uh, but thank you so much for your time. I wish we could talk more on that. On that. Um, the Climate Environment Campaigner for Environment Rights Action, Baba Wale Obayonju. Thank you. Thank you so much.